What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to solve questions using charts. Let's go. So what do we need to remember today? We need to remember to check the value of each part of the graph or table super carefully because we don't want to make any small mistakes because we've not looked at the graph properly. So let's have a look at this first example. We can see we have a graph here with months across the bottom and rainfall in centimeters across the side, or in other words, months across the x-axis and rainfall along the y-axis. And we can see various months. We can see July, August, September, October, November, and December. And we also have the data shown in this little table in the corner here as well. But then we have this question that says, which months had more that, should have been than, sorry, four centimeters of rain. So which months had more than four centimeters of rain? Well, first let's look at our bars then. So in July, we can see that we can come up the bar all the way to the value of seven. So July has more than four. Let's look at August. If we come up the bar, we can see we can get all the way to five centimeters. So August also has more than four centimeters. Now let's look at September. So September comes all the way up to four. Well, my question says, which months had more than four? So does September have more than four if it has exactly four? No. So September does not count. What about October? Well, we can see with this huge bar here that October goes all the way to eight. So therefore, October also has more than four. November only goes to three. So November does not have more than four. And December goes to four again. So we know from last time, if it has four, it's not more than four. So the only three that have more than four are July, August, and October. And we have just used the information in this graph to help us answer that question. Let's look at another example. Here we can see a pictogram. And I can see across the bottom here we have days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I can see that each of those circles represent 10 cars. And this question is all about how many cars are parked in the car park on these various different days. So my question says, how many more cars parked in the car park on Tuesday compared to Friday. So the two that we're focusing on are Tuesday, so I'm going to highlight that column, and Friday. But the question is asking me how many more are there on Tuesday compared to Friday? So first things first, we need to work out how many there are on Tuesday and Friday. So let's look at Tuesday. Well, I think we have one, two, three and a half cars. Is that correct? No. Because remember, we have this key here to show that each of those circles has a value of 10. So actually what I have is 10 cars plus another 10, which is 20, plus another 10, which is 30, and then plus half a circle. Well, what do we think half a circle is? If a full circle is 10, then a half a circle must be five. So on Tuesday, I had 35 cars parked in the car park. Let's look at Friday, and remember the same principle. We have a whole circle, which is 10, half a circle, which is five. 10 plus five is 15. Let's look back to what my question said. How many more cars parked in the car park on Tuesday compared to Friday? So what it's asking me is, what's the difference between my 35 and my 15? And to work that out, all I need to do is put 35, subtract 15 to get my answer. Now I can use any method I like here. I could use a number line. I could count backwards on my number line. I could use column subtraction if I'm there yet. But I'm going to just work it out in my head because I can understand that 15 is made up of a 10 and a 5. So I think I can just subtract those parts separately. So I'm going to subtract 5 from 35, which turns it down to a 30. Then I'm going to subtract 10 from 30, which takes it down 
to 20. So my final answer to 35 subtract 15 is 20. And again, I use the data on my graph here to help me work that question out. Last examples. These are much harder questions. We can see here it says a cafe owner uses the table below to record the number of sandwiches sold. Use the table to answer the questions. So we can see here we have ham, cheese, tuna and egg sandwiches and then we have them sold on either white bread or brown bread. So if I wanted to work out how many tuna sandwiches were sold on brown bread, I would look to this answer here, which is 17. But that's not what my question says. My first question says, how many egg sandwiches were sold all together? Mamma mia. Okay, well let's look at my egg column. I can see it here. And it says, how many egg sandwiches were sold all together? So it's talking about white bread and brown bread. So I'm going to be adding my 13 to 23. And this time I'm going to use column addition. 13 add 23. Do my ones and tens and I'm ready to start. Start my smallest value. My two ones, three at three is six. And my tens, one and two is three. So my answer to how many egg sandwiches were sold all together is 36. Okay, now we have a pretty tricky question because it says, which sandwich filling was the most popular? So when we see this, we might try and just find the biggest number, which is this 28 or even this 28, and think that that's our final answer. But it's not because it's asking us which filling is the most popular. So we need to work out how many are sold altogether of each of the four fillings. So what I've got to do is add up all of the totals for each of the four ingredients. So we know that egg has 36. So let's put that here. Tuna has 28 plus 17. Now again, you can use whatever method you want. I'm just going to use my head. And I'm going to see that 8 at 7 is 15. And 2 tens plus 1 10 is 30. So 30 plus my 15 is 45. My cheese, I have 22 plus 25, which is 40. Seven, and my ham I have 14 plus 28, which is 42. So which sandwich filling was the most popular? Which has the biggest volume? Cheese has 47. But I'm gonna make sure I put the right answer. It says which sandwich filling? So don't put the answer 47, because that's not a sandwich filling. The sandwich filling is cheese. And there you go, that is how to get answers using different types of graphs. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, head on over to themathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos to help you with everything you need to know about maths. But for now guys, I'll see you in another video. Peace out.